try to give God praise, honor, and glory. For he's worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. God's name is worthy to be praised. Come now, let us make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Let us enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him. Am I in the right place? Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. Let us pray. Dear God, we come into your presence on this third Sunday in Advent as we continue to anticipate your unspeakable and miraculous gift of Jesus the Christ. Thank you because one more time, you look beyond our faults and you've seen our needs. In the words of our forefathers and mothers, we thank you for waking us up this morning, for starting us on our way, and for giving us another chance. Now, God, we've gathered in this place to worship you, to praise you, to magnify your name, and to make you large in this place. So, God, if there's anything in our hearts, in our minds, in our spirits that would prevent us from worshiping you and giving you the glory that you so justly deserve, we pray that you admit it to move right now in the name of Jesus. Now, God, we lift up this congregation, those of us that are physically here, those that are watching virtually, those that may be on their way. You know every need and every problem, every concern that we have. We pray, oh God, that where there's sickness, you'll be a doctor. That where there's confusion, you'll be our peace. Where there's lack, you will provide. Because we know that you're able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we're able to ask or think. No, God, take charge of this service. Have your will and have your way. We've heard from the politicians. We've heard from the political activists. We've read the news reports. But, oh God, today we need to hear from you. Speak to us afresh and anew to the end that we would have gone down from this place, but there'd be no doubt that we've been in the presence of the Lord. Hear our prayer now, incline your ear to us. It's in the only name that matters, the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. He is
to our music ministry. What a beautiful, beautiful hymn that ushers in the Christmas season as we desire to see the one who comes to save us from our sins. Anybody glad to be alive? Anybody glad to be in the service one more time? Has God been good? If God's done something for you this week that you could not do for yourself, give God some praise, some honor, and some glory. Did he not wake us up this morning, start us on our way, put clothes on our back, shoes on our feet, eyes to see, a legs to walk? When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, I've got to give him the praise, the honor, and the glory. I don't know about you, but I'll magnify the Lord, not just sometimes, but I'll magnify the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. The psalmist says, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together, for he's worthy to be praised. Lord, we love you, we praise you, we adore you, we magnify you, and we give you glory. For there is no God like our God. Some notices and announcements. First of all, let me express my deep appreciation to you, Salem, for the way you responded to our clarion call to help these high school students that were homeless and have a temporary state of need. But you responded with personal care goods and with clothing and all kinds of things that you bought. And I want you to know that they are most grateful. We said that December the 10th was our deadline, which we met. But this situation is ongoing. So if there are others who want to bring things at any point in time, please feel free to do that. I will, um, I think we had a flyer and I'll keep that flyer available that had the list of things that we're asking for, things like toothpaste and soap and deodorant and socks and personal care goods, deodorant, um, T-shirts, undershirts, you know, sweaters, hats, gloves. Uh, but they were very, very ap appreciative. And so I want to thank you for Respond, and I tell people all over the world that there are no people like the people in Salem. Also, I want us to pray, and we will take a moment in this service to pray for our brothers and sisters in Kentucky that was just ravaged with a major tornado. I was just listening to the news on my way in, and like more than 70 lives have been lost, 270 miles of land, people's homes have been totally destroyed. Um, they're finding more damage than they thought now that 
daylight has come, surrounding states have been affected. It's only by God's grace and mercy that we're here. It could happen to anybody. We were hit with Hurricane Henry and Ida, but not to that extent. But God has kept us, and God blesses us to be a blessing. We are anticipating, and I know we're going to have a wonderful Christmas musical, which will be next Sunday. Say to yourself, if you don't want to say it to your neighbor, that next Sunday is our musical celebration, the joyous sounds of Christmas. This is my favorite time of the year, and our music department has been working diligently, and we will start promptly at 3 o'clock. And you want to be here. And it will also be live stream. We're going to try to live stream. So try to look right, because you'll be, we won't be able to fix you. Sometimes now we edit the service, we can take things out, and we all have to be on our best behavior, you know, sit properly, smile, even if you don't want to. So people that are looking at us will see that we are a happy people. Um, and Jesus is the reason for the season. And then on Christmas Eve, Christmas Eve on Friday, we will have our Christmas Eve service that will start at 7.30. And then, you know, we don't keep you long. We will have communion at that service. Birthdays are times of remembrance. And Jesus must have had some disciples that looked like us, and he knew that we had a tendency to forget. And that's why at the Last Supper, he said, this do in remembrance of me. And as often as you do it, you do show, show forth my dying and my suffering till we shall come again. So please plan to be with us for our Christmas Eve service. And then we will do it again for New Year's Eve. We'll be here at 7.30 and thank God. We anticipate that God will allow us to see the end of the year. We don't know, we walk by faith and not by sight. But if the Lord should allow, I hope that you'll meet us here on New Year's Eve at 7.30 for our service as we thank God for allowing us to come to the last day of the year. I think that's pretty much what I have for us right now. I want to um, congratulate, and I want you to help me congratulate Ms. Sarah Long, who has been elected as the new Young People's President for the Ushers Association of Brooklyn and Long Island. <laughs> And then, and then Bryce Bryan, he's going to be the chairman of the board. <laughs> now, they did something that warmed my heart this morning. They came in my office and said, Pastor, we have been elected to these positions, and we'd like for you to pray for us. So I want to invite them to come now. And we want to say a prayer for them as they take on this leadership role. And we also pray for our brothers and sisters in Kentucky. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for continuously looking beyond our faults and seeing our needs. We pray now, God, for Sarah Long, who has been elected president of the Young People's Ushers Association for Brooklyn and Long Island, and for Bryce Bryan, who has been elected as chairpersons, as chairman of the board. These are your children, oh God. We pray that you'd open up their minds that they might understand their hearts, that they might be receptive to your will and to your way, and help them to have their eyes open that they may see and know that you are the way, the truth, and the life. Allow them to grow in as Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature and favor with God and man. Help this experience to be one that will be a stepping stone to other things that they will do in life. As the church has always been the place that has prepared leadership for our community. We thank you for them and for the desire that they had to come and to know that they need a source, a power greater than themselves. Now, God, we pray for our brothers and sisters in Kentucky and surrounding states that have been affected by this tornado. This tornado did not catch you off guard because 
you're omniscient, you know the end from the beginning. And whatever it is that you're attempting to say to us, oh God, help us to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church in this hour. Bless those that have lost loved ones, those that have lost property. Oh God, make a way out of no way. Some of us can testify that we've come to know that you're all we need when we get to the place that you're all we got. And so we cast our cares upon you because we know that you care for us and you care for our brothers and sisters that have been affected. We pray now, God, that you would make a way, show yourself mighty and show yourself strong. It's in the only name that matters, the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. Thank you, young people. Show them some love. How many of you know that while you yet pray, God will send an angel on the way? By the time you're finished, the work can already be done. I was thinking this morning, I was saying to um, Mrs. Thornton, I'm so concerned about um, Pastor Orlando McReynolds because he moved to the Kentucky area. I wanted to know how he was doing and couldn't find his number. And lo and behold, um, a long time standing member and friend of our church, Jerry Green, who's the minister of music at First Baptist Church, came into my office and said, oh, I'll find Pastor McReynolds for you. And um, he is here today, I'm delighted. And he didn't just come empty handed, but he came bearing gifts to the church. So he gives us a love gift today. Um, and I wanna thank him so very, very much for his generosity and for just remembering us. I want you to help me to welcome these beautiful ladies. They're looking so sharp. Uh, the National Council of Negro Women Brooklyn section that are here with us today. Show them some love. Yeah. Now without any further pontification, let me invite the National Council of Negro Women who want to come and make a presentation. And if there's anybody else who want to make a presentation, and you want to be announced, I'll announce you for presentation as well. Won't you come at this time? Good morning. I'll take a leaf out of the book of your pastor, Pastor Thornton, and just say to yourself, it is good to be here. The National Council of Negro Women Incorporated was organized by Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune on December 5th, 1936. NCNW is an organization of organizations comprised of over 300 college campus sections and 32 national women's affiliates. Two million women and men strong. And I stand corrected, 1935, please pardon me. We're celebrating our 86th year. The National Council of Negro Women Brooklyn section was founded January 22, 1962 by Odessa L. Skeen, our first president. So the Brooklyn section celebrates Founders Day the second Sunday in December. So we wanna thank you, Salem Missionary Baptist Church, for allowing us to celebrate our Founders Day in person with you on this Sunday. Our mission at NCNW is to lead, advocate for, and empower women of African descent, their families, and communities. The Brooklyn section we work diligently in bringing to our members a greater awareness and participation in activities in the community. We work strongly to maintain community events 
and empowerment committed to our young people through education, outreach, programs, and counseling, and also recognition. So on that note, we present this monetary gift to Salem Missionary Baptist Church in your efforts to continue to maintain commitment to our youth and whatever needs to be done in the community. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you, Brooklyn Section Council sisters. You already know how I feel about you. Thank you, it is good to be here. Show some love to these beautiful sisters and the wonderful work that they do. And so many of our own members are members of, I always get the initials wrong, NCNW, National Council of Negro Women. But thank you for the wonderful work. It's just wonderful for organizations to continue to carry on the rich tradition that belongs to us. And really, what we have as a people is our faith in God and the church and organizations like the National Council of Negro Women that have been birthed as a result of the spirit of God's love. Show God some love and appreciation. Now this wonderful women's chorus they're going to sing, and after that, I have invited my executive assistant, Sister Kimberly Ellis, to come to read the word for today. Prepare ye, prepare ye. 
shall see it as a purifier of silver. Chapter 1, verses 26 through 56. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Word, if you can. In the six months of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month, for no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a, low, in a loud voice, she exclaimed, blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord will fulfill his promises to her. And Mary said, my soul glorifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed for the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. 
His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about three months and then returned home. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his holy word.
It's all right to give God some praise. I'm so glad he knows my name. I'm so glad that nothing can defeat me. I'm so glad that in him I have the victory because we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Great is he that's in you than he that's in the world. All things work together for good to those who love the Lord and are the called according to his purpose. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When my enemies came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after. Because in the time of trouble, he'll hide me in his tabernacle. Somebody give God praise, honor, and glory, because he's brought us a mighty long way. He's kept us through dangers seen and unseen. Oh God, we praise you, we magnify you, we adore you, and we give you glory, because there is no God like our God. Thank you, choir. It's all right to give God some praise. You can let people steal your money, let people talk about you, but don't let anybody steal your praise. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of your grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope and my will be lost and thine. Draw me nearer, nearer, precious Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Now, God, allow the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart to be found acceptable in thy sight. It's in the only name that matters, the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. Last week, I spoke from the subject, Advent brings tension and resolution. And we talked from the perspective of Joseph and how it is that he became concerned and upset and perhaps even angry when he learned that Mary was pregnant since he had had no relation with her. And in those days, when a woman stepped outside and committed adultery, yes. the word said that she should be stoned. We learned that Joseph did not listen to the press of the crowd, but he prayed. And in prayer, God spoke to him and revealed to him that this thing that was in her was of the Holy Spirit. And so we learned that while this season also brings tension, when we talk to God and we are obedient to God, God will bring a resolution to the problem. It may not be the answer you want, but it'll be the right answer. Our forefathers and mothers used to say, he may not come when you want him, but he'll be on time. When I was younger, I didn't understand that. I thought if he don't show up when I want him, how can he be on time? But God knows what you need when you need it. And God has a way of preparing us for what he wants to give us when God is ready. And so when the time is right, it's what we call Carol's time. We have Kronos time, like I'm watching my watch right now because I try not to keep you too long in this season. But that's our time. But Carol's time is God's time. And when our time and God's time come together, that is the right time. Today I want to talk about the Advent story of Jesus from the perspective of Mary. I want to suggest to you that this season, while it can bring tension and resolution, it also brings favor and joy. I want to thank Kimberly, who read the word so well in our hearing today. The text opens, and I want to suggest to us today that many of us sitting here are pregnant with great possibilities. 
and we have to believe that God is able to keep his word and do what he said. We have to be able to step out on faith and believe that yes, we can get out of debt. Yes, God can provide new housing. God can even give us a new attitude. Because I read in my Bible that if any man or woman be in Christ, he or she is the new creation, old things are passed away and behold, all things become new. The text reads that in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth at a town in Galilee to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, greetings, you are highly favored. The Lord is with you. I want to say to somebody this morning that you are highly favored. God is with you. And I want you to understand that God's favor can take you where your money won't take you. God's favor can take you where people can't take you. Because when you have the favor of God, God can reverse the situation and take you places and people will look back and be amazed. Here's Mary, she is a peasant girl from a small poor town. No one has ever heard of her before and God sends his angel to her. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greetings this might be. Why was she concerned? She was concerned just as Joseph was concerned because she had been faithful. And some of you have been faithful. And I know that there may be those who may not be aware that you have been faithful and they may think that you have not done the right thing, but if you know in your heart that you've done the right thing, I come to tell you this morning that God will work it out. Because God has a way of taking a crooked stick and hitting a straight lick. He can make the crooked places straight and the rough places plain. And when it's all over, God's glory will be revealed. The angel said to Mary, do not be afraid. You have found favor with God. Here, the angel affirms for Mary about what God is about to do. And one of the things that all of us need is that we just need some affirmation. We need some people to affirm what God is doing in our lives. We need, I, I felt affirmed this morning when I was talking about Pastor Mac Reynolds and um, Brother Jerry Green walked in my office. And um, he said, Reverend, I listen to you every morning. Every Sunday morning after my service, I listen to you. I, I felt affirmed that, I mean, there's a whole lot of folk you can listen to. You can listen to T.T. Jakes, Joel Osteen, all kinds of folk are on the social media, but just to know that somebody that don't even belong here decided to listen to me. That gave me some sense of affirmation. And the angel says, do not be afraid, you have found favor with God. And let me tell you what God is going to do. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary is going to be not only favored, but God is going to elevate her to the end that she will bring into the world the Savior of the world. God will lift her from a peasant person up to a high, exalted place, because whatever God has for you is for you. And God tells her how this is going to happen, that the Holy Ghost is going to come upon on you and the power of God is going to overshadow you and God is going to do something great and you are to give him the name Jesus. In Hebrew it's Joshua. Um, in Aramaic is Jesus um, and what it means is Yahweh. You are going to actually give birth to God himself. You are going to give birth 
to God in human form to the end that God will tabernacle with us. That's why we ought to get excited when Christmas comes because God sends God's self in a way that we can identify with God. Don't you know that God is so jehujic, so infinite, so mighty that we couldn't even comprehend God, but so that we could get a sense of who God is, God comes down and dwells with us. I'm so glad that he knows my name. Somebody ought to give him praise, honor, and glory. Now, what I like about Mary is, is Mary doesn't ask a whole lot of questions. She doesn't ask why is this going to happen. She don't ask when is it going to happen. She doesn't ask where it's going to happen. I mean, Zechariah has all of these questions when God tells him that you've been praying, you've been working in the temple, and your wife Elizabeth is going to bear a child in her, in her old age. Zechariah says, how can this be? I'm an old man, it can't happen, but you need to know that with God, nothing is impossible. And Mary simply asks, how will this be since I'm a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the high shall overshadow you so that the one to be born will be called the Son of God. And not only does God have a way of affirming us, but then God has a way of confirming what he said. I love people that like to tell me what God said. The God, God told them to tell me. Look, if God tells somebody to tell you something, God is going to affirm it and confirm it in your spirit. The spirit will bear witness to the spirit. But if you don't see a sense of collaboration from the spirit of God, then God probably did not tell that person anything. And you got to be so careful today because I'm off, I'm off my script for 30 seconds here because there is so much con work going on. People call me and they're like, James, how are you today? The warranty on your car has expired and you need to renew it right away. They don't know me. James, first when they call me, I know that's wrong right there. And that reminds me of my father. You know, I take, used to take my father to the doctor, and um, the lady would call him, Thomas! He said, Wait a minute, my name is not Thomas. I am the Reverend Dr. Thomas Jane Boyd. Yeah. They called up and said, you know, um, you, you need an additional mortgage on your house. But he knew that God knew his name. He said, Madam, I don't owe anybody anything but the Lord. Click. But God has a way of confirming. Here it is. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. She's almost ready. She's in the second trimester. For no word from God will ever fail. I like the way the King James put it. The King James puts it this way in um, Luke chapter 1, verse 37. He says, for with God... Nothing shall be impossible. I want to say to somebody this morning who doesn't know how you're going to make it, that with God, nothing is impossible. I want to report to you that I spoke to Sharon Rock, and she had surgery, and she came out of the surgery successful, and she said that she hasn't felt this good in 20 years because with God, nothing is impossible because he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes... We are healed. She said, Reverend, I like the fact that he says we are healed. Not that we will be healed, not that we might be healed, but that we are healed. I'm almost done. Not only does God show favor in this season, not only will God affirm us in this season, not only will God confirm us in this season, but God will also give us joy in this season if we are obedient to him. Here it is. Mary says, I am the Lord's servant. Everybody wants to be something great. Now we got archbishops and bishops and potentates. At the end of the day, when it's all said and done, all we are is servants. When I get to heaven, I just want to hear him say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. Come on up higher, and I'll make you ruler over many. 
Mary says, I am the Lord's servant. I'm yours, Lord. Try me now and see if I can be completely yours. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. At that time, Mary gets ready and goes down to see Elizabeth. And when she enters Zachariah's house, she's greeted by Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the babe leaked in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And in a loud voice, she exclaimed, blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child that you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reacted in my ears, the babe in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill her promises. I like this now. I like the fact, first of all, that Mary, a young lady, goes down to check on her Aunt Elizabeth. Elizabeth is already six months with child. Mary goes to see Aunt Elizabeth. Aunt Elizabeth is not jealous of Mary. Um, Elizabeth is going to bring forth the forerunner of Jesus, but Mary, who is younger, is going to bring forth the Savior of the world. But she celebrates what God is going to do in Mary's life. Somebody would be blessed if you, didn't, if you weren't so jealous, if you weren't so frustrated when God is blessing somebody else, but just give God praise for what he's doing in somebody's life because then it means that God is in the neighborhood. I don't know about you, but when somebody gets a promotion, when somebody gets elevated, when somebody gets a new degree, I give God praise for what God is doing in that person's life because I come to tell you this morning that it is no secret what God will do. What he's done for others, he'll do for you. With arms wide open, he'll pardon you for it is no secret what God can do. Then I want to show you something else that I saw in this text. Whenever Jesus shows up, even in a minute form, you got to give him praise, honor, and glory. Uh, Mary has conceived Jesus. He's probably just in a very minute, embryonic state, but he's in the womb of Mary. And so when Mary comes into Elizabeth's house, even John, who is in Elizabeth's belly, begins to praise God. Don't you know that when Jesus shows up, that even demons have to crumble at the name of Jesus? Don't you know that at the name of Jesus, every knee has got to bow and every tongue has got to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord of all to the glory of God the Father. If some of us wasn't so sedity and we recognize that it was God that woke us up this morning, God that started us on our way, God that kept us from COVID. Some of us never had COVID. We ought to give God praise, honor, and glory. Some of us had COVID and God brought us through. We ought to give him praise, honor, and glory. Some of us been torn from the floor, but God has looked beyond our faults and seen our needs. I'm so glad that he knows my name. I come in here this morning just to give him the praise, just to give him the honor, just to give him the glory. I say in the words of Mahalia Jackson, I'm going to thank him for how he's brought me. I'm going to thank him for how he's kept me. I'm going to thank him that he's never left me. Advent brings joy. And then Mary starts praising. Mary says, my soul does magnify the Lord, and my spirit does rejoice in God my Savior. For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant, and from now on all generations shall call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me. I don't know about you, but God has done great things for me. Every time I stand in this place, I give him praise, honor, and glory. Every time I'm able to get one foot out of the bed and step on the floor, I give him praise, honor, and glory. Every time I can get myself dressed without any assistance, I give him praise, honor, and glory. I dare you to count your blessings. Name them one by one. Count your many blessings and see what God has done. And then God gives Mary a prophetic word. Here it is. He says, he has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. I want you to know that some mighty people are coming down. Hitler came down and committed suicide. Uh, Mussolini came down. Saddam Hussein came down. And Donald Trump is on his way down. And some people, God is going to reverse and lift you up. And people are going to wonder how you got there. You can say, I got there because he knows my name. I got there because he looked beyond my faults and he's seen my needs. And then the Bible says, 
she didn't just have a brief visit with Mary, but she stayed with her for three months. Probably, it was six months. She was in the sixth month when Mary got there. Right? It takes nine months, I understand. I never had a baby, but those of you who have, sometimes may take a little longer. So it's probably the ninth month, and the baby was probably born while Mary was there. We need some young people to look after the older people. We need some older people to pour, wit, to pour wisdom and virtue into the younger women because we're all in this together. If we don't learn to work together, then we're going to die together. But out of one blood have God created all of us to dwell together in unity. And then the Bible says that God had already said that this child that... Elizabeth was going to have that the baby's name should be John. They wanted to do something else. Just like church folk. They don't want to listen to the thing. They said, well, no, he should be Zachariah Jr. God said, no, the baby's name should be John. They said, well, there's nobody in the family named John that had shut Zachariah's, Zachariah's mouth closed. And I wish God would close some folks' mouths so they wouldn't be so negative talking about what God can't do. I want you to know he's able to do anything but fail. I trust in God. I know he cares for me. A mountain beaker on the rolling sea, my heavenly father watches over me. Now, in those days, it was the father that named the child. Even when Jesus was born, they said to Mary, his name shall be called Jesus. But it was only when Joseph said that the baby's name is Jesus that it was confirmed. So here it is now. This was not part of the reading, but you can just follow the text, and I'm getting ready to take my seat. It says, on the eighth day, I'm in verse 59 of Luke's gospel, they came to circumcise the child, and they were going to name him after his father, Zachariah. But his mother spoke up and said, no, no, he is to be called John. There's always some folk that think that they know more than what God has told you to do. They said to her, there is no one among your relatives who have that name. You can't do this. But if God tells you to do something, do what God says. If my people who are called by my name, will humble themselves, seek my face, and pray, and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven, and I'll heal the land. Then they made a sign to his father. He had been stricken, so he couldn't speak, to find out what he would like to name the child. He asked for a writing tablet. And to everyone's astonishment, he wrote, his name is John. When you're, be when you're obedient to God, not only will God give you favor, but God will give you joy. Here it is, immediately his mouth opened and his tongue was set free, and he began to speak and praise God. He said, praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has come to his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the household of David. I want to tell you that it's time to give God some praise. Here it is, we got Mary giving God praise. We got Elizabeth giving God God praise. We got Zachariah giving God praise. We've got all of these folk who are giving God praise. We've got the baby in the womb giving God praise. I want to know if, if he's done something for you, why don't you give him some praise? If he made a way for you, you ought to give him some praise. If he opened up a door for you, you ought to give him some praise. If you've been sick and he healed your body, you ought to give him some praise because he's worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. God's name is worthy to be praise. I'm so glad that God favored me. I'm so glad that God affirmed me. I'm so glad that God confirms me. And I'm so glad that he gives me joy. And this joy I have, the world didn't give it to me. And the world can't take it away. And I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to Christmas where I can come and declare joy to the world. The Lord has come. Let earth receive a king. Let every heart prepare him room and heaven and nature sing. He rules the world. We don't rule the world. Donald Trump doesn't rule the world. Biden doesn't rule the world. Putin doesn't rule the world. We don't rule the world, but he rules the world with truth 
and grace. Give him praise, give him honor, give him glory. In the name of the Father, name of the Son, name of the Holy Spirit, amen. And what I like about Jesus is that he knows our names. He knows our faults. He knows our concerns. But he looks beyond our faults and he sees our needs. If thou will confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in our heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And all you have to do is come to him just as you are. Won't you please stand? Is there one this morning? And let's just make this our prayer, just as I am. Come on, choir. Just as I am, that love I owe. presence of our God. Anybody glad you came to church today? Let me take this opportunity to thank those of you who support our church. It's because of your financial support that we're able to do the things that we do, and I'm so grateful. I can tell you this, that you can't be God-given no matter how you try. Also, it's Christmas time. It's the time for giving and sharing, and um, since I'm my own promoter right now, Somebody said, if you don't toot your own horn, it may not get tooted, but I think I've done a fairly decent job this year. And there are some envelopes in the pew there um, for pastor's Christmas offering, if you care. You don't have to do it today. Um, you can take it home and pray over it, maybe bring it back on Christmas. Yeah. Let the Spirit lead you. But more importantly, it's most important that we give to support God's church. And I want to thank those who are watching virtually and don't sometimes get to church now just because of this, this virus, and it always seems to be something. You know, I thought we were about to turn the corner, and then we got something called Omicron. And now it's in several states here, so we have to just continue to be careful and follow what we've tried to do is follow the directives that we have read from the CDC and from what we see from those who are epidemiologists. I don't know what's wrong with some of us. I mean, if you have a problem with your teeth, you go to see the dentist. If your foot hurts, you go to the podiatrist. If you got a problem with the heart, you go to a cardiologist. Now, none of us are epidemiologists. We don't know anything about dealing with an epidemic. We don't know nothing about dealing with a pandemic. And then we got the scientists and the doctors who have studied this and somehow people who've not been past the medical school, <laughs> I just, it's, it's, it's mind boggling to me. Um, and then there are those that would argue, well, if you got faith, why you need a vaccine? Look, I take the vaccine in faith. <laughs> Give me the booster too, because God made everything. 
He's omniscient. He knows the end from the beginning. I mean, some people, including me, need Jesus and a therapist. Yeah, I go talk to my therapist, try to get my mind straight. Because, you know, I know the Bible says that he'll keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on him. But sometimes you need some psychological adjustment. All right, I'm getting in trouble. Um, and we got guests, so let me try to continue to behave. Let's listen out of God's word. Malachi chapter 3. Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. Say, Lord, wherein have we robbed you? God says, in your tithes and your offerings, therefore you're cursed with a curse, even this whole nation. God says, bring me all the tithes in the storehouse, that there might be meat in my house. God says, you try me, you prove me. See what I'll do for you. See if I won't open the winds of heaven and pour out blessings upon you, that you shall not have room enough to receive them. And in honor of my late father, who gave his orphan through the envelope system, which I continue to do. My envelopes are down in the trustee room. And his thinking was, if you have any envelopes left, you rob God. You know, he said, uh, he said, well, no, I, I doubled, uh huh? I didn't have an envelope. But no, today we give virtually and electronically. I pr give it however you want to give it. You want to put it in my hand, I'll take it. But I do know this, that you can't beat God given no matter how you try. And in his honor, I think I'm down to two envelopes now. I'm almost at the end, right, Jarvis? I'm almost there. And I'm going to give something extra today to the building renovation. Let's pray. Dear God, for the opportunity to just be in worship, for allowing us to partner with you in your salvation plan, we give you thanks. Now, God, bless the gifts that the people have given those that will give those that have a desire but don't have it this time. But we pray that you would bless and multiply these gifts because we recognize that all things come from you and of your own do we give back to you. Show some love to our special guests. Don't they look wonderful? Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for your gift. Thank you so very much. Um, Brother Jerry, thank you so much for being with us today. Please come see me again. And don't forget to send me um, Pastor Mac Reynolds information. And Salem, doesn't the church look beautiful? I want you to know that I love Christmas so much that I came in here this week. and. I watered all of these poinsettias individually. I bought a watering can. You see how they're spruced up there? Because I want Christmas. Get, if you're not in the Christmas season, you better get in it because Christmas is coming whether you're in the season or not. Let's go. Tell it on the mountain. Over the, you sang good today, baby. You played well today. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance. May he grant you his peace and his love. And you're going in and you're going out. And you're down sitting and you're uprising. May he grant you a merry Christmas and the very best for the new year. Through Jesus the Christ, to whom be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever.